Hello and welcome everyone in another episode of Researcher Celebrity. And today we are delighted to have Sukanta Bhattacharya with us as our Researcher Celebrity. Uh, welcome Sukanta on behalf of Researcher Celebrity and Empowering Science Foundation. Thank you, Raja. Yeah. Glad so, to be here. A brief about uh, Sukanta is like, Sukanta has done his BSc and MSc uh, from Sambalpur University majoring biotechnology for masters. And then he moved to IIT Kharagpur for his PhD in enzymology. And then he moved to University of Cincinnati, uh, taking a brief uh, layover in lovely professional university in Punjab. And then he was there for a long time. He went back to India for, uh, and he served in IITM Meerut. And then he had been to an entrepreneur also. Now he's back in University of Cincinnati. There is a long list, but with, with this now only, I would uh, welcome Sukanta once again, and then hear uh, from Thank Sukanta. You so much. Yeah. So Sukanta, the first question is our traditional trademark question that how and when you thought and decided, so initially when you thought you want to be become a researcher, and then when you decided that you really wanted to be in this forever? Um, I think that, you know, uh, the, the thing of research, it starts, you know, it starts very early. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, you always think that, you know, you want to do something differently or, you know, you have this probing nature. Like, you know, all of us have a kid, kid, kid within us. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, it's that kid which is growing up, you know, trying to find logic in things. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, and that's what I find very interesting, you know, uh, and, uh, and basically after that, you know, you, you stay, you get trained in the subjects that you love and then you start exploring those subjects and, uh, and I would say that, you know, right from, uh, the beginning when I had, I was in my college or so, so I had some, I had some very wonderful teachers with, uh, who taught me and uh, they inculcated, you know, in, in me the idea of research mm -hmm. that, you know, that if you are inquisitive, you, you try to discover it yourself that what, what is going on. Mm -hmm. So initially it was, it, it was read more, go through, go to different books to find, get the information. Mm -hmm. And then it was, you know, you do some experiments, you try to find out that, you know, how is it working? Mm -hmm. And then slowly as you you uh, you gain more experience you gain, gain you know you gain more knowledge you come you come across you know good teachers uh -huh. who 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 show you the path you come across you know good colleagues good friends so you know you develop this you know this inquisitive thing and then slowly you get the opportunities so i would say that you know uh, being a researcher is uh, uh, it's a mix uh -huh. it's kind of a mix of your inquisitiveness it's a mix of uh, the opportunities that you get. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mix of, you know, the uh, the acquaintances that you get. So it's everything taken together that makes a, it makes a researcher. Mm -hmm. And once you start loving this, so you are a researcher forever. That's yeah. what I would say, the, the answer to your question. I completely agree with this. And uh, this is something which I, I always say that once a researcher, always a researcher. You can never... Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing it requires is like, you should be passionate about it and it True. should not be like, you know, either a stop over or you just uh, want to, you don't have anything to do. That's the reason why you want to do this. And the uh, there are certain, very few people like this also, but they then they cannot sustain for long in research because it engrosses you. You just fell in. Very yeah. true, very true. Yeah, like, uh, like, like it said, you know, if you make your hobby or profession, you mm -hmm. don't have a single working day in your life. So nice. if, uh, if research is your hobby, uh -huh. so make it your profession, you know, nice. and if you love going to the labs, if you love, you know, uh, uh, do, do, setting up your experiments, if you love seeing the results, uh -huh. if you, if you're excited about the outcomes of any experiments, if you are excited about, you know, reporting your findings, uh -huh. uh, new paths taking up new assignments, new problems. I think research is the right place for you. That's what I believe. Nice, nice. So this is, this is also something which came up in one of our conversations at Researcher Celebrity. So Dr. Aditya Parikh, he mentioned that uh, 
the life life balance because people talk about work life balance he said life life balance because as you said if you make your hobby as your job so you are actually enjoying it so there is no work for you because you are enjoying your life or everywhere absolutely absolutely that's true <laughs> so now uh, you i i cannot ask you this question that work life balance because you already took that off that you enjoy that is your hobby you want to be in research and True. that is what drives you so now let's switch it to another uh, base talking of sure. failures in uh, research you have been in the research for almost more than a decade now you are passionate yeah. we can see and yeah. you this is, research is your hobby as you said absolutely now, how the passionate and researcher who feels that research is the hobby how he deals with those not so working days yeah that's a that's a very good question you know like uh, yeah absolutely you know things not working out getting negative results so these are a part of research and you know uh, so many a times the experiments that you are setting up they don't work uh, sometimes they don't follow the you know the path that you have decided because always we put put forward a hypothesis mm -hmm. that is this is the hypothesis which we are going to are going to pursue sometimes we put it sometimes our mentors they put it mm -hmm. and sometimes you know your your, your colleagues or your you know uh, or your collaborators they have their hypothesis and you are and you are collaborating you are working with working towards it sometimes the things they do not work that's true so yeah like uh, uh, that's a, that's a very critical thing when things don't work uh, i feel that you know that we have to be bold enough to face it mm -hmm. because uh, we cannot uh, we cannot just say that you know it's not working so if it's not working something else is going to work mm -hmm. and you know uh, so i would say i would say is that you know like the way that i think it's uh, like when we are when we are setting up experiments it's not that it's it's never that 100% failure is always there it's not like that mm -hmm. it's it's like sometimes you know like a particular experiment is not working mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some other portions they are working we see that part of the hypothesis it's working part it's not mm -hmm. so there actually what we need to do is uh, i think we have to blend it Mm -hmm. so we have some positive results so we look at the positive results results because because nobody you know like uh, we don't want to see an absolute failure mm -hmm. so we we look at the positive results and then we have these negative results so the positive results which are there so they are they are the fuel for us to you know to keep going yeah. to keep going and the negative results are those things which which we know that you know these are the paths that we we are not going to take mm -hmm. so so when we are reporting even so at that point i think we should blend it you know that you are reporting your positive results so you know it's not always that we go on reporting only the positive results with that we also give the negative results you know mm -hmm. say you have you have you, you have five results among them you, you know three are three are positive and two are negative mm -hmm. so you know so you so what we need to do i think is we need to put all of them like we we highlight the positive results but we also put the negative results there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. means it's not it's not highlighting the negative results so that you know the any other researcher they will be totally disappointed that oh it's not going to work mm -hmm. you know we we are not going to take this path it's not like that mm -hmm. the path has to be taken but these are the points these are the violence that we have to avoid nice so that's how we we should look at it that you know that uh, at the at the end of the tunnel there is light always always and and, and that's not and that's not always of the incoming train <laughs> yeah good one so uh, as you mentioned about the fuel how i was correlating it with this that when you are driving a car you have to have a brake as well as an accelerator so the positive right. results are your accelerator and the brakes are the negative results which always keep you in check that hey man you need to sort some things out before doing something absolutely absolutely that's a, that's a very nice way to put it i really appreciate that yeah okay so now when you are driving your car going through a tunnel and for some time there is always a time when you cannot see a light probably you are you have just entered the tunnel or you are somewhere in between how that impact the mental health of a researcher 
i th i think that you know like uh, that is that is the that is where you know the researcher's temperament kicks in mm -hmm. because uh, because not because i don't think that you know that everybody like you know uh, like you uh, i think that the researchers they're born mm -hmm. like it's not it's not something that yes absolutely you are trained mm -hmm. you are trained but th there is something about the temperament as well because you need to keep going Mm -hmm. need to keep going I, I agree you know like like at, sometimes the way that you say, say that you know that you you are entering a tunnel our research is kind of a tunnel where it's, there's dark you, you can't see forward that you know that how it's going to be mm -hmm. so yeah so I, I do agree that you know that at that point you feel that uh, that yeah how you you are kind of you know uh, you are kind of uh, nervous about the way forward mm -hmm. but I think that that that's where you know you should uh, you should talk to people. Mm -hmm. You should talk to your mentors. You should talk to you know other colleagues, mm -hmm. because because everybody goes through that. Yeah. Everybody goes through that, mm -hmm. and after that, you know, you get success, and you know, the the success, you know, you can you get the taste of the success when you know, you know the taste of the failure. Mm -hmm. So if if you if you you know if uh, you you are tasting success every day, so you you cannot differentiate between a uh, between success and failure. You don't know the you know the joy of getting it. Mm -hmm. So you know, so research is about failures, but at the end you are going to succeed because you know you you try this way, you try that way, you try a number of ways, mm -hmm. and then and then you know, then you get get another way that that works out. So I would not say that these are all failures. Mm -hmm. So these are all just another trial. Yes. So we should look at them as just as trial one, trial two, trial three, trial four in that way. Yes. Okay. So it so you don't know that when when the trial which will which would succeed is going to you are going to get so you are going to get there mm -hmm. and these are all experiences that you are getting nice. so I would put it in that way so yeah in in research I think that we should not lose hope mm -hmm. so uh, yeah as as young researchers you know like when we started our research at that time yeah we do get you know we are all very passionate and and then you know we do get setbacks in research we think that you know oh it's not going to work out. But you know, we should we should keep on talking. We should we should talk to uh, to our mentors. We should talk to our you know other people who have who are there in the field, our seniors or you know our colleagues, whoever we are comfortable with. We should we should get the experience. Like you know, we should get the the, the experience. We should share share our you know. We should not keep it to our, ourselves. You know. So I think so. Th that's how you get the fuel to keep on to to keep going, yeah, and yeah. and ultimately succeed. Absolutely. So yeah, we should not stop. We should never stop. Yeah. So here I would like to tell all of our audience that as Sukanda said, never stop. Okay. Go talk to people, meet your mentor, your friends, take a break. Again, you know, start all over. Sometimes you have to start all over again from the scratch. But let me tell you one thing that life has this funny way of working out. When you think that it will never work and it just start working out. So always be Very open true. for it and then just keep looking, keep talking. This is one thing which is now getting acknowledged in research community, the mental health, the balance. How important is that? What we have seen in recent past that kids, students are backing out. They are dropping their PhDs either in between or almost uh, uh, after three or four years, which is sad for researcher community. But what it shows one more thing that that might not be for you, because if you don't love it, as in starting Sukanta mentioned, that they are born. If you're born, you're fine. You, PhD is part of training of your being a researcher. It lays the foundation with which you can build all the entire future of yours. So here, Sukanta, what are your suggestions if you have met or if you have been through that, like at some point of time, you have seen people moving out of their PhDs and they're quitting their research careers, their jobs. If you have felt any time, how was that? Or if you have seen your friends doing it, how did you, you know, tell them and what you can suggest to our new researchers? See, uh, like, uh, like you said, you know, uh, that at times it gets frustrating. People drop out of PhD. So, yeah, I, I think that that's a, 
that's a very true thing and that's a very frequent now uh, that uh, that that researchers they they quitting their research getting frustrated in between sometimes at the very end at the very near end of the phd just dropping everything and saying that oh i, I don't i don't want to pursue it mm -hmm. i have better things in life let me move on mm -hmm. so now let now i would i would say that you know uh, that's definitely a sad thing to, to, to that's uh, that, that happens but at the same time uh, i would say that that's uh, means like uh, we all have completed our phd and it has been quite quite some time mm -hmm. so now that we that i look back on on it on on my own experience on the experience of others mm -hmm. so uh, you know uh, so when we are doing our phd at that time we are very much in, engrossed in our research mm -hmm. we 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 think that this experiment is my life yes. so if this doesn't work out it's you know my life is over mm -hmm. so that is the thought process that goes on at that time that mm -hmm. you know this this thesis it is the ultimate it, it's ultimate in science that's what we think that you know our thesis we means whatever research or research potential we have we are going to put it in there uh -huh. but but now you know like what i think and what i what what i would even suggest i uh, whenever i meet young researchers you know so i i, I definitely i make it a point to say to them that phd is not the end of the world uh -huh. it's just your license yeah okay. it's your license to do research to uh -huh. do independent research to think independently the your a recognition that you have done something you have done something unique. Uh -huh. So the so to the to all all my young young colleagues, you know, uh, the, the 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 young friends who are doing their PhDs, I I would I would say that PhD is not the end of the world. Uh -huh. It is it, it is you know PhD is about making a story. Uh -huh. PhD is a story because in PhD what happens in PhD what we do is we identify an area of research uh -huh. that you know that this is what we are going to work on. Mm -hmm. So uh, we so we we find some field interesting and then we we read we go for a literature review that as we call it. Mm -hmm. So you know we will we, we will go through the work of all the other other researchers what or, or other relevant fields. Mm -hmm. So we go through everything. Seems like there is an internet connection issue here, but uh, I feel like what Suganta was essentially saying that there is uh, just not the only thing that PhD you can do. You might be good at one thing. You might not be uh, excelling everything. Yeah, Sukanta, now we, we got- Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. No, it's, it's uh, fine. Yeah, yeah, we, we, I, I lost you in between, so. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, uh, I was saying that, you know, like uh, we, so, uh, once we do this literature literature review, so we identify an area that mm -hmm. you know that where where more work needs to be done, mm -hmm. and and we just you know we we form a hypothesis that this is this is the area where where, where this this additional work can be done, and yes. this makes a complete story. Yes. So the story is that this is the problem which is there. So mm -hmm. this this is the work this is the work that needs to be done to solve this particular this small piece of problem, yes. and then this is this is what I do I have done. And this is the, this is my outcomes, and then these are the future directions. So I need not complete the entire work, mm -hmm. so that ent because you know any any field we cannot we cannot uh, you know find, I mean uh, find a solution to a problem mm -hmm. in, in just one PhD. So mm -hmm. it's a, only a small part that we find a solution of because those those are you know it goes step by step. Mm -hmm. So we cover one step yeah. in the PhD, mm -hmm. and then we form a story and we present it. And then, and then we defend, you know, that we defend uh, our hypothesis, we defend our experiments, we defend our results, our in inferences, mm -hmm. we support our hypothesis, and that gives you your PhD. Mm -hmm. In the process, you 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 do communicate papers, you have manuscripts, you have publications in between, so that are part of the game. Mm -hmm. So so, and you get your get get your PhD done. Mm -hmm. So I would say that you know, like I would suggest that you know, never, you know, it's not the end of the world. So mm -hmm. it's not that yes, I I get my PhD and and my science stops there. No, your science doesn't stop there. It begins there. Yeah. So, so so it's not about so you should not even think you should you know when you have worked towards it, you should get that degree. So mm -hmm. think of it as a story. Mm -hmm. No, try, try to make a story out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would suggest to any any young researcher who is there. That's that's what would be my suggestion to them. Mm -hmm. That always think of a story. Mm -hmm. Always try to narrate that what what you are seeing in your field. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, storytelling is art. So, you know, research is also an art like mm-hmm. that. Like, mm-hmm. like just storytelling. You need to, research is a storytelling in science. Mm-hmm. That's what I would suggest all my research, uh, all my young, you know, friends over there who are interested in research or who are doing research. Mm-hmm. Nice. No, I think that was a very nice way to put things uh, in one sentence. And uh, here I would like to uh, mention what Cynthia Thurlow said, that bad chapters can still create great stories. Wrong paths can still lead to right places. Failed dreams can still create successful people. Sometimes it takes losing yourself to find yourself. And this is what have been observed in so many researchers at some point of time when they were almost gave up on their dreams. Some of them gave their dreams and then they become entrepreneurs or they were successful in other fields. But most of them, when they when they stood for one extra mile and that's when everything changes. They are successful, world-renowned and people know them for their research. This is one thing which I believe every researcher should always keep in mind that there are laws, yes. You might have gone through a lot. You might go through some more, but you have to keep that attitude that everything has to fall in place. You are dedicated. You are passionate about your research. It has to work. There is no way it doesn't work. So it is always your choice. You want to be in there, you want to do it, or you don't want to do it. So our uh, our conversation here is like, if you want to do it, then just be more happy about it. And that gives you uh, positive uh, vibrations, uh, hormones, happy hormones. So if you are happy, things work a different way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, like, uh, the, like we should keep the. I, I would say that we should keep the goal in mind. That mm-hmm. our goal is to, like, like for for a young researcher, yes, definitely. He, he, the goal is to get the license. Uh-huh. The goal, the goal is that you know you need your PhD. Yeah. So ultimately, once you get your PhD, nobody is going to you know go back and see that what you endured, what you went through. Mm-hmm. So you know, so so these are just a part of it. Yeah. So just think of the bigger thing that you know that once you get your PhD, what are you what. What what all do you you can pursue all your dreams. Mm-hmm. So uh, so yeah, I would say that you know like just just, just stick to it. Uh, whatever results sometimes you are getting, so think about it. If mm-hmm. you are getting negative results, if uh, if research is giving you a hard time, mm-hmm. it does give a hard time mm-hmm. at, at times. So mm-hmm. so you know so so it's fine. Like you know so you you just you know, get your results. You uh, you try to think about it that what might have gone wrong. Mm-hmm. It cannot be, you know, it it cannot be out of the air that things things are not working. Mm-hmm. So it so if it's not it if it didn't work, it didn't work. Mm-hmm. But there is a but there has to be a logic why it didn't work. So mm-hmm. think about that logic mm-hmm. that that what went wrong, mm-hmm. what what might have gone wrong. You know, you know, if if you cannot think at that point, then take a small break. Mm-hmm. You know, take a small break and then you know and then get a get a twenty thousand feet view. Of mm-hmm. what things are hap- that how things are going on. Mm-hmm. Look at your story once again. Mm-hmm. That you know the the way that you are pursuing it. Look mm-hmm. at your career, mm-hmm. the way that it is going. Mm-hmm. So it's fine. Let, then, then after that, I am sure that you know you'll you'll come up with a different idea. That yes, this is not working well. That would start working as you said. Take a different path. Nice. Absolutely. So yeah. So yeah. Like uh, during the PhD, you are very flexible. Mm-hmm. You know, if one story is not working, mm-hmm. try a different story. Mm-hmm. So no, so you, you, there are n number of things that you can do. So you are very much you know, all throughout the research, I would say. But you know, in PhD more so, mm-hmm. you can always you know you can you can you can tell your tale whatever you know you want to, but in whatever way you want to tell tell it. Yeah, nice. So Sukanta, you have been through so much. You started as a researcher in your bachelor's and then master's PhD assistant professor, associate professor, postdoctoral training, you have done all of that. You have tasted uh, some time being an entrepreneur also. True. What are your experiences during this entire journey, which you would like to share with our community, that how you have seen the research be changing 
or what you felt about your journey? Um, like it, there, there are like you know, uh, all throughout when when I uh, you know all throughout my career, yes, uh, you are very right. You know that I got different opportunities to you know, uh, like to train myself, different experiences I did gain in the, along the path. So yeah, I, I would say that there that it's uh, it's different at different levels. For instance, during my PhD, it was all about you know my work, mm -hmm. that you know the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I was very much focused on my own project and, you know, that, yes, this is the work that I am, that, you know, that I'm focused on. Mm -hmm. So I have to write a thesis. So this is my story that's going to happen. So those kind of things. And of course, like I was lucky in the sense that I was even trained for writing grants and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, then, you know, drafting manuscript. So those, and then taking classes as well. Mm -hmm. So, so PhD was a good training for me, you know, in different ways. Mm -hmm. That gave me a, quite a few experiences, some very good, some not so good, but mm -hmm. training, of course, and like, you know, uh, when, when I moved on in life and then, you know, the, they helped, they did help me those experiences. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those, the PhD was all about that, you know, basically it was, it, it was making up your own story. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you are, you're learning to do research there at how, 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 you know, how you should pursue, how you should approach the problem. So it was basically your own training that was going on. Then after that, yes, after that, I got a, got an opportunity, you know, to work as assistant professor. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, I, I think it was it was more about training the students. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it the research the, the the way that research was done, it it changed a bit, mm -hmm. in the sense that at that at that point, uh, it was not very mega, you know, it was not uh, complete projects that I could take take up like you know like in PhD that I took up for myself. So it was basically with students that, you know, you have small projects, you have very small problems, micro problems, mm -hmm. and there you you divide those problems, you you uh, call your students and then, you know, you discuss with them the... The discussion with student is very important. I'm sure he has done a lot of it and might be thinking about it. Yes. So Ganta, we got you back. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, there, there was some, you know, it's some a... connection issues. Everyone knows now these days, the technology sometimes is not that reliable. So we do need still the notebooks where you are supposed to write it in. Yeah, yeah. you need a backup still now. All of us do. Yeah. Yeah. True, true. That's why we have our lab notebooks still. Absolutely. Everything doesn't, you know, we don't keep everything on, on you know, on soft copies only. <laughs> yes. So, yes, yeah, so Sukanta, you, you can continue from uh, your assistant. Uh, you were sharing about assistant. Professor. Yes. Yes. So, so in the in assistant professor, so that's what I felt that, that you know. The, so the projects that you design, so they're, they're you know you design very small projects, very small projects, very do doable projects. You know the outcome. So kind of you know it's it's kind of a I would say, kind of a got up game. Like in in PhD, uh, you do not know. Like you know you know forty percent, sixty percent is unknown. Mm -hmm. That you know. So you are pursuing the sixty percent there. You are making up the story of the those sixty percent which is there. Yeah. Uh, in assistant professor, when you are doing, when you are dealing with the students, so at that point you know ninety percent of it. You ninety ninety percent of the project. That is, this ninety percent it's going to work. So this ten percent which is there, so th that's where the curiosity is because that's a very time bound project. So you know, so so that's how you hand it over to the students and they pursue it. Mm -hmm. And then of course there was you know brushing up of my uh, academics because mm -hmm. I had to take classes. Mm -hmm. So it was good to, you know, uh, to really read te textbooks after a long period of time, mm -hmm. because, you know, at the because the last time that we seriously read the textbook is during our MSc. Mm -hmm. And after, you know, with PhD, it's reading the research papers, basically, and very, very, very less time that you go, we go really go back to our textbooks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, uh, yeah, my faculty position, which was the assistant professor, it was like, you know, it was a good, uh, it was a good opportunity to brush up, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, it was uh, it was a postdoctoral exp uh, research which was there, which was totally a different experience. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, it was it was very similar to a PhD, but but here, you know, you had to write big stories. Mm -hmm. It means you know, like you did not have to write a complete story, but you know, you you keep on pursuing a field. Mm -hmm. So you keep on pursuing a field. So there is so definitely there are projects which are there. So in the project, so here a lot of it is unknown. A mm -hmm. lot of it is unknown. So you so you are going on pursuing things. 
and you know so here you make stories but you are you are make, you, you know uh, you are not on you know you are not you are not getting a license here you are driving you know you are really driving on the road now yeah so so that is what postdoc you know is all about uh, it's it's uh, it's pursuing new fields uh-huh. so in my, so uh, in my uh, so in my research like uh, when i was doing my phd so i was working on bioremediation mm uh-huh. so in in uh, so in bioremediation so basically i was working on the biodegradation of this toxic chlorophenols mm-hmm. using you know enzymes mm-hmm. so that that was that, that's what was my project at that time during my phd mm-hmm. so in my postdoc i started with that mm-hmm. i did start with that that you know like i started with the bio, biodegradation of the of of a different set of compounds so that was those were polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons mm-hmm. there i was working with the chlorophenols mm-hmm. so it was different set of uh, toxic compounds which were there on which i was doing this uh, biodegradation but then you know like slowly i started started shifting so i so i i i i developed this curiosity you know to, to see that what's what happens next mm-hmm. you know so yes we degrade this these compounds so some are degraded some are not some are bio transformed so th- so you know they are changing you know so th- these are changing from one compound to other compound may be less toxic may be more toxic mm-hmm. due to our enzyme action so what happens next what happens when it they enter into the human body mm-hmm. so there i you know i started switching and i came to toxicology mm-hmm. so i started working on toxicology from there so uh so and and from and toxicology i you know i again it was uh, i started you know looking at the microbiomes Mm-hmm. like you know the 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 consortia of microorganisms that we have in our body uh-huh. now they are playing a very, very big role yeah. so in our health and well being maybe more than our own genome <laughs> yeah. so, so so those things so, so you know so so i got i start getting into those things uh-huh. so i would say that it so postdoc gives you an opportunity to transition so it 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 uh, you know from one field to the other to uh-huh. expand your horizon Mm-hmm. to learn more uh, to learn more techniques to collaborate mm-hmm. to meet new people to get get more ideas and to do you know uh, and it's not here you are not you are you are not just a student that you know you are just you know learning and you know just exploring to, in in bits but you can you can go at bigger lens you can really really collaborate and you can you can you know build on big ideas mm-hmm. so that's what i would say is postdoc all about mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, yeah seems like we in administration as well yeah yeah so so in administration it's it's more about managing this is a very important point which we'll be touching on once we have sukantha back about the roles of yeah. administration so yeah so yeah. uh i was just uh, talking about this that you just touched about administration so what some people think that when you are doing phd the management and administration is not involved in it what i believe that if you are doing phd not only in india anywhere you are managing your grant sometimes you True. are managing True. your paperwork so you are doing a bit of administration also in there absolutely and in your journey how do you feel that your phd has trained you for management as well as administration phd plays a great role because uh, because you know like uh, when you are doing your phd so phd is basically a training period because uh, when you start your phd at that time you start basically you know to learn you, you start you start with learning things you start with learning doing research mm-hmm. but then as you move on at that time you know you are you are interested with your own project mm-hmm. so you know that you know about your own project that what you need so you are designing your experiments uh, you are you know you are placing your own orders you are basically you are you are deciding upon whatever you want to do mm-hmm. you are discussing it with your mentor your phd mentor and then you know you are coming to a conclusion that yes we need these things to be done in this way so you are managing that part mm-hmm. and then as you move on so as i was so as I, so in our lab i was at the, at the opportunity you know like there were a lot of you know uh, younger younger researchers coming in 
uh, uh-huh. joining their PhDs. So as I moved on, so I had, I had a lot lot of young lab mates. Uh-huh. So there, what you do is you start, you know, to mentor mentor them, like you know, first hand mentoring. Yeah. Because of course your PhD mentor is there, but then when you are in the lab, so you know you have a you have a bunch of young guys who are there, who are who are passing through exactly the same path through which you have passed. Yeah. So they they so you are always you know you you are sharing your your knowledge, uh-huh. you are you are sharing your techniques. You know uh-huh. you are passing on whatever you know to them, uh-huh. because you know uh, because that's what we do. Yes. Yeah. So uh, so 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 in that way you know. So you are so you are kind of mentoring them. So, uh, so your role as a as you know administration as a as an advisor, it it you know as an immediate advisor as an immediate mentor, it it starts you know increasing there. Yeah. So you are you are basically you are trained there to you know to uh, to give a first hand advice to you know wh- whoever seeks it. Yeah. Based on your own experiences. Uh-huh. So that's how it begins. So so I think that that's. So basically, that's the way that it's uh, you know you you are trained during your PhD. Then in PhD, you are also supposed to take classes, which I which I took. Uh-huh. So during the classes, also you are like you know you are interacting with young students. So they are coming up with their problems, with the uh, with issues which are there. So that you are trying to solve. Uh-huh. Uh, what you you cannot solve, you seek your mentor's help. That you know you pass it on to your PhD mentor or or whoever are their mentors. So you pass it on to them. So in that way, it's a very interactive environment. So mm-hmm. it's it's training you 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 in multiple ways. So you know, so in during your PhD, you know about uh, how to uh, like you know how to manage your experiments, mm-hmm. how to you know how to make stories, how to put forward your manuscripts. Mm-hmm. You know about the about the funding bodies which are there, which can grant your research. Mm-hmm. You can you, you know how to put your research forward. Basically, it's not about doing, you know, just about keeping doing, uh, keeping on doing good experiments. Mm-hmm. Not about having a good, very good hand, lab handset. That that's always that's a mandatory thing, mm-hmm. but it's also putting it forward. Yes, it's it's explaining it to other people that yeah. what you are doing. Yeah. So if you keep keep the things basically to yourself, mm-hmm. you are, you are not going anywhere. Absolutely. So you need to talk to people. You need to, you know, put forward your findings. So when we are able to do that, I think that's the that, that's that's what PhD. Yeah, I think that's uh, what we are talking here. And Sukanta also said that PhD is not just the training of your experiments. It is way more than that. You learn management, absolutely you learn administration, all of that. So Sukanta, now we are almost at the end of our the conversation. So we did talk about experiments. We did talk about management. We briefly touched about their mental health. The In few uh, last few minutes, I want to ask how important was your families and your friends in your journey? I think they play, very, they play a very critical role. Mm-hmm. in you know uh, in the journey of uh, in my journey they did play a very critical role because you know uh, because my parents they always you know they were very open that you know do whatever you want to do mm-hmm. so yeah i got i did get that opportunity you know like uh, i was i was lucky in that way that uh, i i i got uh, my parents as my parents <laughs> who, who were so supportive uh-huh. you know during uh, they they were absolutely okay with you know to, to for for me to pursue you know the the this as my career path mm-hmm. and uh, and about friends you know at MSc uh, I did get friends you know like who were who who were equally interested into getting into getting into this research mm-hmm. so yes absolutely you know your friends uh, your your family they do play a very important role mm-hmm. because you know. Uh, it's it's i think it's everything taken together that makes a researcher yeah. like you know not not only in my case but uh, you know in everybody's case mm-hmm. i think it's it's a combination you need to be a right person at the right place at the right time right. so that's that so that so that's what makes a researcher because mm-hmm. i think that you know like uh, if if i if i go back to my school if, if i go back to my school right from the from, from the time that i started you know uh, get, being literate, like I started my A, B, C, D, you know, mm-hmm. writing that. Mm-hmm. So it's not about that, you know. I was not the absolute best mm-hmm. in that. Mm-hmm. So there were there were people who were you know who were better than me, 
Mm -hmm. had better acumen in uh, probably in science. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they, 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 they could, uh, they could uh, somewhere more, they, they were more some. Yeah, so now what we will do, uh, we are almost approached our limit. So now, uh, Sukanta, yeah. your last words of wisdom, suggestions for upcoming researchers, master students, PhD students, postdocs, and uh, yeah, the, for now. Yeah, I would I would say that, you know, like uh, what I, I would say is that, you know, just uh, be passionate about, you know, you are in the field because you are because you are passionate about it because you know I, I believe that anybody who is coming into research has come into research because they feel they, they have that passion mm -hmm. they are passionate about you know pursuing the pursuing science mm -hmm. that's why they are here don't let the passion die yeah don't let the passion die just hold on to it mm -hmm. you know there there can be ups there can be down there, there are ups and downs mm -hmm. but yeah just hold on to it uh, pursue it look at the larger goal because uh, first is uh, we need to train ourselves. That's in PhD. In the postdocs also, we, we we are training ourselves. We collaborate, and mm -hmm. then when we uh, then when we move on, we train others, yeah. and then we also pursue. You know, we also pursue science. So yeah, pursuing science, uh, finding up uh, like you know, identifying problems, solving them, solving the problems. That's our passion, and let's keep doing that. Nice. Don't let the passion die at any yeah. point of time. There Thank will be ups and downs. Thanks, Sukanta. That was great uh, having you in, at Researcher Celebrity as Researcher Celebrity. So here I would uh, like to tell all of our viewers Thanks that so if much. you want to uh, contact Sukanta, you can write his, e uh, his email is provided in the link. You can directly write to him or if you want to use the platform of Empowering Science Foundation, you can write to us and then we can put you in touch with researchers which you want to be in uh, touch with. We'll see you all in another episode of Researcher Celebrity. And thank you very much, Sukanta, for sharing. Thank your you, Rajan. Thank you so much.